All oh, right, just wanted to do a video responding to Ed Fenninger's video he made against me on my, uh, basically reacting to my video I did on debunking non-dispensationalism. And basically he's trying to disprove me that salvation has always been the same faith alone throughout the entire Bible, and that salvation has always been by faith, and that there's always been eternal security throughout the entire Bible. And I want to just point out right now, before I begin, is that in my video, uh, the video that he reacted to, I did, you know, make some errors. I did say... Uh, I used the, the verses in Leviticus and Genesis where it talks about how they're being cut off from among their people. Well, what Ed Fenninger does correctly point out that what the verse is actually talking about, because I was interpreting in the verse as saying that they're being cut off, like basically they're losing their salvation. But Ed Fenninger, he does correct me by pointing out that uh, what it's talking about is that it's being cut off from the nation of Israel from like a physical sense, not actually losing your salvation. So I will point out that, you know, I was wrong in that area. But I do bring up a bunch of scriptures proving that salvation, you could lose your salvation in the Old Testament. And I'm going to bring up some scriptures right now, but let me just kind of play the video first. Good afternoon. I was planning to restart my videos uh, after a long layaway, being away from the videos, making videos for a while, uh, dealing with uh, particular doctrines and why they're important. But uh, Young Brother in Christ, he, he's putting up a, a video a series, I guess. Nine dispensationals debunked work salvation in the Old Testament, and uh, he's trying to refute nine dispensationalism, which is an error by putting another error up that there's work salvation in the Old Testament. And you'll see some of the errors he makes. He associates being cut off with spiritual death when it's really physical death. So you see right here. So again, I'll say it again. You know, I was wrong in that area. I did. You know, so I will give him credit. He did. Uh, correct me on that, which I was wrong, you know, when it talks about being cut off from uh, the people, it's talking about from a physical sense, you're cut off from the nation of Israel, but it doesn't say you're, you're losing your salvation. However, I can still show you some passages where, even during the time of Jesus Christ, you could lose your salvation. Um, here's some proof on that. So, uh, because, you see, there was, there, no, for, like for right now, there is eternal security, but even during the time of Jesus Christ, when he was walking this earth, there was not eternal security. Let me show you that. Um, Matthew chapter 10, verse 33. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. So basically, if you deny him, and this is while he's walking on earth. This is during the time of Jesus Christ. If you deny him before men, then he'll deny you before, your, before his Father. Um, basically... You can lose your salvation during the time of Jesus Christ. Yep, according to this passage, you could. Because if he denies you before his father, you know, how how is there eternal security? You know, and of course compare that to, oh, I can't remember the passage. Uh, darn it. Should, I should have had this in my notes. I have my notes right there. Uh, I think it's, let me just look through it. Second Timothy, I believe it's 1.15. Uh, sorry about this. I should, I, again, I forgot. I forgot to put this in my notes. I think it's Second Timothy chapter one verse fifteen. Uh, oh, this is not going as planned. <laughs> sorry about that. Twelve. Okay, sorry. I'm just, I'm just gonna go look for the uh, verse. Sorry about that. All right, okay, I found the verse. So it's in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 11 to 12. So we read in the previous verse, in Matthew chapter 10, verse 33, that he'll, if you deny him before men, he'll deny you before the Father. We'll compare that to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 11 to 12. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead in him, we shall also live with him. And in verse 12 it says, if we suffer with him, we shall also reign with him. If we, if we deny him, we also will deny us. But then in verse 13, but if we believe not that he, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. It's a contradiction there. Uh, no, it's not. Two, it's two different dispensations. You see, when Jesus Christ was walking on the earth, they were still under the law. The New Testament had not come in yet. The New Te Testament did not begin until after the death of Jesus. So when Matthew, in the events of Matthew, they're still under the Old Testament. So they could still lose their salvation. That's why he says he'll deny you before his father. I mean, how does that line up with uh, verse 13 where it says he cannot deny himself? Because when you're a member of the body of Christ... He can't deny himself. If he denies you, he'd, be, he'd basically be denying his own body. He'd be denying himself. So, again, a contradiction in this whole eternal security being, you know, eternal security throughout the entire Bible. And uh, a verse I want to, another verse I want to go to, I've written in my notes, is uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 25. Um, 
me just find that verse 6 verse 25 it says uh, actually no I'll read verse 24 and the Lord commanded us to do all these statues to fear the Lord our God for our good always that we might that he might preserve us alive as it is to this day verse 25 and it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he hath commanded us huh it's our righteousness um, I thought Romans chapter 4 Romans chapter 4 talks about how Christ's righteousness is imputed unto us when we get saved but in Deuteronomy talks about how it's our righteousness so they're saved by faith alone uh, no they're not saved by faith alone in the Old Testament you see with non-dispensationalism you have to compare scripture with scripture Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 25 is a contradiction of Romans chapter 4 which says how it which says that it's Christ's righteousness that is imputed unto us but then in, in verse 25 in Deuteronomy in chapter 6 it says it shall be our righteousness but also compare that to uh, Titus chapter 3 verse number 5 because uh, again you see if you're not if you think salvation has always been the same the Bible becomes a complete contradiction uh, verse 20 uh, verse 5 not by works of righteousness which we have done but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost huh so wait a second in Deuteronomy it talks about how it's our righteousness but in Titus it's not by works of righteousness so it's a blatant contradiction right there and uh, also Ezekiel chapter where is it? Ezekiel chapter 18 verse number 24 is a good one uh, I, I, didn't, I, don't, I don't think I brought up in my video verse 24 uh, proves that there was a works and you, uh, there's a works salvation in the Old Testament and you could lose your salvation Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 24 but when a, when the righteous man turneth away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity and doeth according to all the abominations that the wicked man doeth shall he live at all his righteousness that he hath done shall not be mentioned in his trespass that he hath trespassed and and is, sorry and is his sin that he has sinned in them shall he die uh, it's his righteousness and notice this um, that he hath done shall not be mentioned his righteousness should not, be, should not be mentioned so they're saved by faith alone and eternally secure uh, no then of course it talks about in verse 26 when a righteous man doth when a righteous man turneth away from his righteousness and commit iniquity and dieth in them for his iniquity that he hath done shall he live and it talks about how verse 27 again when a righteous or when a wicked man turneth away from his wickedness that he hath committed and doeth that which is lawful and right his he shall save his soul alive so wait a second, you have to, to actually turn from wickedness or to save your soul? Yeah, according to verse 27, if a wicked man doth turn from his wickedness which he hath committed, he shall save his soul alive. So they're saved by faith alone? Uh, no, you had to turn from your wickedness. So it was not faith alone in the Old Testament, according to Ezekiel verse, uh, chapter 18, verse 24 to 27. So that's kind of my response to this um, video by Fender. I'm not going to play the whole video because I just I don't have time. Uh, but uh, again, I'll, I'll point out that you know he did he did you know point out how I was wrong and and that uh, those verses were talked about being cut off is uh, of course talking about how it's being cut off from a physical sense, but that doesn't disprove the fact how you had to turn from your wickedness to be saved according to Ezekiel, and there was a works based system even in Matthew 10 verse uh, 33. You know he'll deny you before his father if you deny him before men. You know you see, so even during the time of Jesus you could still lose your salvation. Uh, so. That's kind of my response to uh, Fenninger's video. Uh, just so, uh, do I teach eternal security? Yes, I do believe in eternal security in this dispensation. But there's no eternal security in the time of Jacob's trouble. Let me show you that. Uh, Revelation chapter 14. I think this is the verse I actually brought up in my video. I, I don't know. I, I don't totally remember. Uh, I don't have the best memory. But Revelation chapter 14, verse 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or on his hand verse 10 that same the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of god which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lamb verse 11 and the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name so wait a second, you can lose your salvation during the time of Jacob's trouble if you take the mark? Yes, because notice how it says if any man. It doesn't distinguish between saved and lost. It just says if any man. Because there are people that will be getting saved during the time of Jacob's trouble. Absolutely. 
but it doesn't distinguish between saved and lost. If that was, if if there was eternal security in the time of Jacob Trouble, it would just say if any lost man takes the mark. It, but it says if any man doesn't exclude Christians. So you can only conclude that if a Christian takes that mark, they get God's wrath and they go to to the lake of fire. But look, look at verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Wait a second. You keep the commandments and the faith? Uh, how is it faith alone? You keep the commandments and the faith. So that's kind of my response to uh, Fendinger's video. So anyway, God bless you. Goodbye.